Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I have a little guest here today. This is Tiki, my 16 year old Chihuahua. He was getting a little extra needy today, but I have a haul for you. So today, this haul is actually going to be from the Pomona Antique Mart. The video, I did the shop along, I uploaded it last week, and this is the haul. It's probably gonna be a short one, but I hope to have two videos out for you this week. The second one is actually gonna be from the Pomona Collector's Fair, which is right outside the Pomona Antique Mart. It's uh, every two months. They do take a break in the summer, like the Palm Springs Market, and there were some cool things there. It was a little bit slow, but it was nice. So I might actually have two videos for you this week, but let's get into the haul. Okay, so welcome back. All right, so Tiki ditched me so I could have two hands ready to show you all the amazing things that I got at the Pomona Antique Mart. And if you have not watched that video yet, I'm gonna link it down below. And if I could figure out how to do an iCard, I will do that as well. So you can see the first part. And there were so many things that I had to pass up that I plan on actually going back once I get a little bit more money in my pocket to claim if it's not already purchased. So let's get into the haul. Okay, the first item that I have for you was these little ceramic, there you go. These are little ceramic uh, candles. I thought they were kind of unique. I've never seen something like that. Here is one. So you can see how the bottom is there. They are stamped Yukago. Um, they do still have their stickers on the back. I thought they were kind of unique, you know, they're nothing near as cool as a pair of Lucite candles, but for some uh, certain items that I have, this is going to be a perfect little addition to those. So, the second item that I got was, you know, it was a little, you know, a little more useful, I guess, than just kind of fun. It's another nightgown I know you guys this is another long nightgown it's not quite as vintage as the olive colored nightgown that I got in Pomona but again just like one of my other videos where I showed you the light colored nightgown this is gonna go with a lot of my long items that I need something to go underneath so I picked this up when I saw it and talking about housewares, I actually also grabbed this little, I would probably say 60s, possibly early 70s plastic trash can. It is in very good condition. This is actually going to be for sale. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and I think somebody is really gonna enjoy having this. There is no cracks. Um, just some minor surface kind of rubs and things that once I get this cleaned, it is going to be perfection. So I was very excited for that. Okay, so the next item that I got, and I have been on a big brooch kick lately, is this cool brooch. It's a poodle, and she has a ruby eye and a pearl body. Here is a look at the back. Oops, it still has this little string on it from the vendor tag. There's the back there. And again the front. So this one might possibly 
be for sale as well. I haven't quite decided yet what I'm gonna do with this one, but I was very, very excited to find it. Okay, so you guys all saw in the video, ho ho hobo Santa. This guy is in very bad condition. Um, he is trimmed in real rabbit fur and it is just completely just dirty. It's falling out. He is also very um, sun bleached and also again dirty on his red part. I actually plan to do a rehab episode where little Mr. Santa goes to rehab and he is going to be good as new so watch out for that. I'm going to call it Lilacs Repair Shop and yes I'm going to be repairing Broken Vintage and you will be able to come along with me on the successes and the potential non-successes because I don't always know exactly what I'm doing but eventually I find my way so keep a lookout for that but I did think that this was a Holt Howard Santa I love his little bag it says Noel he is actually a, a 1961 Napco item he still has his sticker I snagged him because I didn't want him to go to waste and I knew that I could give him a new life and make him look brand new and fresh again okay so are you guys ready for some glowy glass I have for you this gorgeous Amberina Ellie Smith Moon and Stars Covered Candy Dish. It is absolutely gorgeous. There are no chips or cracks in it. It was $50, but for collector's price, that's not horrible. And, you know, I kind of, you know, I might have treated myself because I absolutely love Ellie Smith Amberina Moon and Stars. Um, I'm trying to slowly collect everything, even though it is not always as easy as it seems. I definitely was excited to add this piece to my collection. You can see the cadmium glowing there. And then to go with the glowy Amberina, wrapped around there. I got myself a set of glowing uranium glass sh wine glasses. Sorry. There you go. They have the hand etch detailing there. They are absolutely beautiful. They definitely have a lot of glow in them. And I was very excited to grab these. This design just glows so cool. I can't wait to put a drink in it and see how it looks that way. But I was very, very excited to pick these up. I think they were about six to seven dollars each, so not terrible. And I absolutely am so excited to have a growing uranium collection. One of these days, I have to plan a nice Zoom party where all of the uranium lovers can get together and have a little soiree in their black light settings. <laughs> okay. So, one thing that you guys saw that I found, and I'm actually going to plan on doing a separate segment where I go through all of these a little bit more specifically because not only did I find these technique books, this is the technique of Barbara Schwinn. She is an illustrator. I also found the technique of Jay Clymer. This fellow was also another illustrator. And all of these books are Art Instruction Inc. from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I think they're from 1956. But you guys, look at this. I found the entire seven book course 
for the art instruction and I'm so excited as a graphic designer and as an artist to open these up and check them out. These were bundled up really, really tightly. I paid uh, $23 for this set of seven books, which was an excellent price. They were bundled so tightly, I don't even know all of the titles, so you guys are gonna see this with me. Um, I didn't wanna cut it open until I did this video, so let's see which books that we have. And again, it is the full set of seven. Okay, the first book is the basic drawing book. And I am actually, after I go over these quickly with you, I am gonna do a quick video inserted where it basically just kind of flips through these and you can see them a little bit better rather than me holding them up. Okay, so the second book is Drawing in Ink and Wash. The third book is Basic Composition, Color and Perspective. I love even just the graphics on the front. Okay, this one says important. This is advertising layout. Oh my God, I cannot wait to see this, you guys. Like I said, I'm a graphic designer and this is right up my alley. I cannot wait, but I was reading this giant important label. So let's read it together. It says important. This is one of the regular lesson textbooks of your course. The lesson work on page 64 must be completed and sent to the school before you do the lettering lesson in your other book four. Okay, so there we go. Advertising layout. Oh, this is good. Okay, this next book is fashion illustration. It oh, goes over everything to talk about fashion illustration. I can't wait. It's purple. I love it. We are going to flip through this here in a minute and see what is inside of that. Okay, we're on the second to last book. Oh, okay. Color Harmony. Oh my gosh, yay! This is going to be speaking about all of the popular color combinations from the mid 50s, I am sure. I am so, so excited to get into this one. And the last book is The Human Figure. I'm sure this is gonna be a lot of life drawing. It's gonna be understanding the human form. Uh, during school, I did do six months of life drawing, so a lot of this, I'm sure, is gonna be very familiar to me. Oh my gosh, okay, so I also discovered that they have a separate commercial art course book uh, series that I want to track down now again from Art Instruction Inc. in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So if any of you guys come across the textbooks, um, message me and I will probably be interested. <laughs> okay everybody, I am going to flip through these books with you. So this is a really cool letter. It basically talks about how they pulled all of Barbara's original artwork from her advertisers and printed them in this book. And they were basically just excusing uh, their printing process for potentially lessening the beauty of her work. But I think it was pretty accurately depicted. That's Barbara Schwinn herself, and that's her at her desk and her daughter modeling. And when you go through this, there are just so many great photos. I love the layout of each page and how they incorporate the art. They definitely give you like this, the step-by-step -step from photo to sketch to final product and what it looked like in print. I am just obsessed with this. I love her style of illustration and it's just so feminine and so 50s. So I guess she also was an illustrator for Seventeen Magazine. So it's pretty cool to see some of that artwork and her thought process on how she got there. So I definitely was excited for that. This is some of her portrait work, some of her advertising work. Loved this final spread. Oh my god, I was obsessed with it. <laughs> Alright, the next one we have is the J Climber. 
And yes, I was in my car on my lunch break trying to do double duty film this, so that's why the background is a little odd. <laughs> so this basically talks about, again, that this is a great work, and please enjoy this book. There's the artist himself. Now, this artist seems to do a little bit more realism based in history and a lot of animals. There is a whole section that you see here on the animals that he painted for different advertisements, articles, layouts. That is a great photo or a painting, sorry. Beautiful horses, I believe that was for Chrysler. Some studies on bears. And you see there one of his paintings. It's really cool. And I actually, on my studies of looking at these um, books, I realized that there are actually other artists that I need to track down. So I do have a few saved on Etsy, but there are a few other um, artist special booklets floating around out there from this series. So I'm definitely going to pick that up. All right, here we go, guys. Book one, basic drawing. So some of these I flipped through kind of quick so you don't get bored. But again, please, please let me know if you'd be interested in me going over these a little bit more in depth. I think once you see some of the books in later on in the series, you may um, say yes. <laughs> but I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Ooh, some buns. <laughs> But this is some basic drawing. It's, you know, it's good to see that sometimes, you know, things do not go out of style. This is exactly how I learned to draw and how I began to understand perspective. There is actually another book just involving perspective that we will take a look at. All right, drawing. And this is really cool. The whoever had this took impeccable care of these. There are still the original inserts and additional supplements that were sent out to them that were not in the original book that I was very excited to see. Some breakdowns of opaque wash and things like that for painting. This is a little do-it-yourself corner square there so that you can have your square corners when you're creating your art. And again, one last supplemental insert on pencil and crayon technique. And the Barbara book and the Jay Clymer book did have some damage on it, some uh, water and mold damage. But again, like I said, this seven book series was perfect. This is a pretty cool book. Um, you can kind of see, so, oh, I love that with the with the uh, nylons there. But you see some of the studies and how in the 50s they interpreted human form and settings in a mid-century way in the style of illustration. And again, it goes over some things that do not go out of style. Oop, furs. Oh my goodness. That cutie skiing down. So yeah, I mean, this is pretty cool. Again, I need to actually sit down and read these over because I am so excited to start drawing again. It's been so long since I've took, taken the time to do that. Okay, so this is the Basic Composition and Color Perspective book. Again, this is something that I remember learning in um, school, in art class, and basically just kind of understanding perspective. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I guess after they got their own little square, <laughs> they didn't have to cut it out of the paper. So this is going over some mixed colors, some color combinations and how that incorporates color composition. 
Yeah, this is, it's is so funny because it's bringing me back to my school days of being in art school. Uh, I, I went for graphic design. I got a bachelor's degree, and I've been doing that for about uh, 20 years now. Oh my gosh, I feel old. <laughs> but this definitely makes me want to pick up my paint and my pens. Okay, you guys, all right, we're getting into the good stuff now. Advertising layout. This book made me freak out out I was just screaming inside flipping through this you guys are gonna see okay <laughs> this base I love this this basically goes over a lot of the vintage fonts type sizes and font faces so if you guys are doing your mid-century inspired design you know what fonts were actually around back in 1956 these are kind of some of the studies and basic ideas for layout and hierarchy within advertising, but can you get enough of this art? I love just seeing the sketches, the loose work, the thought processes back then, because I think we can all agree that the vintage advertising does look different from a lot of the stuff that we see today in our glossy magazines. So I definitely was squealing with joy as I was looking through this. I was so excited. But oh my gosh, can you even? I need that stand up Santa. <laughs> and it even, and you see in the back, kind of started going over commercials, which were still very, very new back then. All right, guys, fashion illustration for all of you Glamour fans and your pinup fans. So this goes over some hand, hand gestures, drawing legs, shoes, draping of cloth, and movement. This is another good book. I think this in the advertising layout might be good. Look at all those collars and sleeves and skirts and pleats and patterns and textures and fur and accessories. I'm going to go on and on. I mean, can you even begin to start drooling over all of this? And this is not even getting into the education of how to draw it. <laughs> So I think maybe this and the book before might be good to kind of do a little mini um, exploration and we can kind of check out that stuff a little bit more together. So yes, like I said, please let me know in the comments below. I would very much love to hear back from you and what you think. All right, guys, we are almost done. We only have two more books. This was cool. It was a order form for the items that they would need and the pricing. Again, impeccable condition. I don't know if this person didn't do a good job in school or they were just very, very clean and careful. <laughs> so either somebody ordered these books and did nothing with them, <laughs> but I doubt that because I actually saw uh, some paints on the cover of some of the artist's special books, so they were working. This, again, did you guys see in the beginning there some of the vintage housewares? I love that painting propaganda and basically just kind of going over color harmony and different media. So as you see there, you have painting in watercolor, painting in um, gouache, inks. This color chart was amazing. I think I may need to scan that and frame it. All right, guys, last one. Ooh la la. <laughs> Divert your eyes if you're faint of heart. <laughs> so this basically goes into the human figure. Um, as you can see there, uh, the gentleman is looking like a Ken doll, which is fine. <laughs> That's kind of how I drew it back in school when I was when I was a shy youngster. <laughs> I hadn't seen the things that I've seen now. <laughs> so yes, this is a great book on drawing the form, the female form and the male form. And it, again, it goes into some of the things that they spoke about. That RCA Victor uh, ad was 
amazing. <laughs> so it kind of goes over some things in the beginning that were recapped in the previous books and definitely more in-depth on the actual female form. These are great even if you do pinup modeling for inspiration, ladies. Oh, I love it. Okay, so welcome back. All right, so I saved the best, well, it was all pretty good, I gotta say. This haul was all pretty good, but some of the best for last because I'm a sucker for pixies and luster wear. So I saw, you guys saw it at the end of my Shop With Me video, is this luster wear pixie wishing well. It says drop a coin and make a wish. It has the little luster wear pixie on there with his flowers. You can see there, that is where you put in the coin and make your wish. He does not have a stopper, but that is very, very easy to replace at a Lowe's or Home Depot. They have stoppers you can find, but I have seen a couple of different um, versions of this little pixie guy. Um, I believe this is a... Left in, I believe this is left in. If I'm wrong, I will insert the text now that I know how to do it. <laughs> but this little guy um, is actually the one where his whole body and his hat is luster wear, but his face is not. I have seen some where the whole body, hat, and face are covered with luster wear, so sometimes it mutes out his little features, but I snagged him, I love him, I think he's adorable, his flowers are completely perfect, he is perfect, he's never been mended at all, and I was super, super excited to find Lusterware Pixie stuff, but, oh no, 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 he had a sister, you guys, okay, so you ready for the last, the last item of this haul? <gasps> Yes, yes, it is. It's a Calvin Originals Pixie. Look at this little girl with her little winking eye and her handkerchief. And she's got all of these little flowers. They are all perfect. And the little spaghetti accents here. No chips or cracks. The whole little pixie boot is luster wear as well. It still has the Calvin original okay, okay I want to make sure it was right side up <laughs> it still has the original sticker on the bottom and I was very happy to see that inside it looks like they never put a plant in it there is no crazing or anything she was $18 and I was very very excited to take her home okay so I hope that you guys enjoyed the haul Sorry that it's getting a little late and the lighting is not great here, but I am still trying to track down some uh, good options for lighting me when it is not daytime. Being that I do have a full-time job, sometimes that can be tricky. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for sticking with me. Thank you guys for watching the haul. And stay tuned because like I said, I'm going to plan on giving you guys two videos this week. The second video is going to be a short shop with me and the haul from the Pomona Collectors Fair, which is every two months. It is right outside the Pomona Antique Mart, which is where I got all these amazing things from. So if you guys take a trip out there, you can visit both in the same day because it is a fairly small collector's market, but it is definitely worth checking out. So remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and thank you guys so much for joining me. See you later. <laughs> Bye.